Hey there, hi there, ho there. Welcome to Unit 9, Faults and Folds. So, coming back to faults, we've, we've touched on that, and so we'll, we'll bring that back uh, in the conversation. Then we'll also talk on, on something that we have kind of yet to talk about, and those are geologic folds. And these, you know, these are all deformation of the crust, the crust deforming, and it's either breaking and moving, faulting, or kind of bending, creating these geologic folds. But in either case, to create a fault or to create a fold, you need rock that is under pressure. Doom, 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 doom. Queen David Bowie. Yeah. So we need to apply some pressure to rocks. Now, the name of that force, that pressure, is actually called stress. That's the, that's the technical term in geology. It's the, uh, so the stress is, the, is defined as the force acting on a surface. It may be greater in certain directions, more so than others, but the, the name of the force is called the stress. And if you look at these layers of rock just above this village, you can see how they're all kind of like folded up here. Um, those have, uh, a stress has been applied to those. All right. There are a few different types of stress. There is a uh, tensional stress. So tensional stress uh, acts in a direction kind of away from each other. So tensional stress is kind of like a pulling stress. Compressional stress, stress that acts, you know, kind of towards each other. So kind of compressing in. And then shear stress, uh, side by side, side by side motion. And if all of that kind of sounds familiar, uh, it should, because we kind of touched on this stuff in regards to faults. A number of units back. Different types of stress created different types of faults. So we'll, we'll touch on that again here in a little bit. So stress is the actual force. If the rocks break and move or fold, then that's defined as strain. So stress causes strain. So strain uh, is a change in shape or volume of a rock in response to stress. So whether something has been, um, let me just make me big here. So if, you know, so let's say this ruler, all right? I'm going to apply a stress, that's the force. So I'm applying a stress, that's the force, and the strain is the change in shape that you see. So I'm applying a stress to cause a strain. I can do the same thing kind of with this board. I can apply a stress that causes a strain, okay? Getting back to it, so this this little um, uh, graph here relates stress and strain and how all objects work. Um, so when the more stress you apply, the more strain you can get out of it. There's a portion where pretty much all solid substances undergo something called elastic deformation, which is reversible, and then when an object uh, reaches its elastic limit, it, become, it uh, tiptoes into something called ductile deformation, and then a little too much stress causing a little too much strain, then the material fractures. So let me let me explain what all of that is, and I'm going to use an example. I'm going to use a paper clip. So elastic deformation. This is the first type of deformation we see as we begin to apply stress as we be, uh, begin to see a strain. It's a temporary change in shape from which a material rebounds after the stress is removed. So for example, let me make me big again. <clears throat> so I have a paper clip. I'm going to put my finger in said paper clip. All right. I put my finger in the paper clip. So I'm applying a stress to force this, to wedge this apart. And then you see the strain in that now you see the change in shape of the paper clip. But once I remove that stress, it just goes back to its original shape. That's elastic deformation. It's changed shaped, then it snaps back. Uh, same thing with this ruler. I'm applying a stress. It's, it's undergoing elastic deformation because when I let go and release that stress, it goes back to its original shape. So that's elastic deformation. It snaps back. And believe it or not, even large swaths of rock and plates can bend and snap back. Even something as solid as a rock. 
So that's elastic deformation. So that's the first kind of type of deformation that the material uh, material would undergo. If you continue to apply stress, which continues to apply uh, or create strain, then you might exceed the elastic limit, meaning there's a permanent change in shape from which the material does not rebound back after the stress is removed. So looking uh, at my paper clip again, all right, if I apply a little bit of stress and then release it, it snaps back. But if I apply too much stress, if I really get my finger in there, and then I now remove that, I've exceeded the elastic limit for this, and now it's in ductile deformation. I've removed the stress, but yet it hasn't bounced back to its original shape. So this is ductile deformation. Nothing's broken yet, but I've, I've applied a little bit more stress to cause a permanent change in shape. And then, if you continue to apply stress, which causes strain to rocks or crust, then you get into brittle deformation. Brittle deformation is a permanent change in shape, but when a material breaks or cracks. Rocks that, is, rocks that are brittle in one set of conditions might be ductile in another. So what, I'm trying to, what that's trying to say is, depending on the conditions and where you know, certain rock layers are or, or what's going on in the crust, sometimes rocks will break and move, fault. Sometimes they won't. Sometimes they'll just fold and under, undergo... Um, ductile deformation. So there's some factors that go into play. To continue the example with the uh, paper clip, so if I continue to apply a stress, even more stress, I can just, that or I'm superhuman because I just ripped metal in half. Uh, so I continued to apply a strain and that uh, uh, caused brittle deformation. It broke. It broke. So all of this can happen with rocks, with layers of rocks, with crust. But it depends on the conditions. Some rocks, under some conditions, might just elastically deform and snap back. Under different conditions, they'll deform and stay that way. So that would be um, ductile deformation. Or they deform and they actually break and crack. And that would be brittle deformation. So there's different factors that go into why that's the case. One is the temperature of the rock. Colder rocks will tend to break and snap. Rocks layers that are maybe closer to the surface. Warmer rocks and rock layers tend to want to bend because they're kind of heated up and you can kind of bend, bend in them a little bit. Those are going to be a little bit further down in the crust. How much pressure, how much force, right? If you only apply a little bit of force, maybe that only folds up rock layers. If you apply too much force, maybe that breaks and faults them. The rate of deformation, so how fast a stress is applied. Am I slowly applying a stress to where things maybe just fold up, or am I quickly applying a stress to where things might break? And then the composition of the rock. Different rocks will treat these factors differently. Some rocks, some types of rocks might break when other types of rocks might be more likely to bend uh, given other certain conditions. So as solid as we think you know the crust is or layers of massive layers of rocks are they can actually bend they can actually stay bent and deformed and they can actually be broken as well uh, nothing is nothing is is beyond stress all right so let's go ahead and pause here when we come back we'll talk about faults again we've talked about these back when we were talking about earthquakes, so we'll revisit that again because we are talking about crustal deformation and faults are, are a part of that. I'll see you back here in just a second.